Okay, so it's about quarter past seven on the morning that we're meant to be leaving uh, to go to Newcastle. Uh, Chloe's in full voice, as we can hear. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're basically trying to get ready to um, to go. Um, we were packing till late last night, putting out cameras, as you can see. <laughs> so we put the camera out to like do motion detection and things like that. So if somebody came into the house, then we would know. Um, that someone was here because um, obviously we're going to be leaving this house now for a little while um, Rachel's making the breakfast yeah. with the various coffee machines which we're sort of we're trialling a new kind of coffee machine aren't we we're yeah. sort of trying to move away from the uh, Nespresso one be a bit more eco-friendly and probably save some money um, so we've been using the coffee machine which is the kind of coffee machine we were taking over to Bulgaria as well aren't we yeah yeah, so we were busy as well till yesterday. Um, we sold our beloved BMW, which has been on all our other trips with us. Uh, Chloe again. <laughs> She's not in distress. She's just, uh, just happy. Just Emily's, Emily's messing about with um, stuff on, on the, the, the fridge. Not sure what she's actually doing. Uh, but yeah, now we sold our beloved BMW, so the driveway behind me is empty. Um, and yeah, um, the guy gave us, well he basically came yesterday afternoon didn't he, so it was a really last minute thing, um, we wanted to sell it, you know, uh, before we went, um, I was expecting him to pay me with a bank transfer, but he decided to give me a wad of cash, so that's kind of confused us a bit today, so we've got to like, we've got to go and get, um, or we've got to go, we, when we go to Newcastle, we're going to have to go and find like a bank and paying that money, hopefully, we don't really want to be carrying it with us on the trip. Um, so we're going to go and do that. So that's going to be a bit of a diversion. Great, you haven't put the cup under it. Um, <laughs> it's all going well. It's all going well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is this is this is us before a, before one of the trips. Yeah, I don't think we normally film the before, so we were like kind of like yeah, show people what it's like before you go. Um, and this is what it's like. <laughs> it's chaos. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, we're not doing too bad. I think we're, we're, yeah, we're not on time as such, and we haven't packed anything in the car yet, but we have been packing. Um, I've got the array of, like, cameras and stuff that we're going to take. So you've got, like, the GoPro, which is going on the top of the car. This time we're going to be um, sticking it on with a magnet, so it's going to be magnet on side and outside the car, so hopefully we'll have good weather, um, and hopefully the magnet will be strong enough. We have tested it, it did work. Um, what we haven't tested is I have stuck a load of magnets to the um, to this uh, power bank, and this power bank is going to provide the power for the GoPro um, because the GoPro battery will only last about you know an hour at most, and it will probably just sort of uh, it'll die after that, and it, the camera may even overheat. So we're basically going to be removing the battery from the GoPro. We're going to be powering it off a USB-C cable to the power bank. And hopefully that will give us sort of like around, well, no, up, maybe up to 10 hours filming. Um, I think this is a 23,000 milliamp power bank. As you can see, it's at 100% now. Um, we haven't tested whether that one will work on the car yet. So, I mean, I've stuck it on top of the car um, and it has worked in, you know, to my mind, it feels strong enough. Um, but I haven't actually tested it in an actual um, drive, so we're going to see if it works. I mean, the last time we took the camera out, we, we had a shorter trip, so this is going to be much longer. We got about two odd hours to Newcastle, and uh, then we're going to obviously go and get on the boat, and our boat's leaving, I don't know, about five o'clock this afternoon, uh, or this evening, um, so... Yeah, we're really excited to go on the boat. We've been on it once before. Um, it was really good fun and it was like a nice and relaxing way to kind of travel across the continent. Normally go to Dover and it's kind of like really busy there. You get a, you know, you, you, you know, there's loads of boats. You get on the boat and you're kind of just on it for like, you know, an hour or well, two hours maybe. Um, with this, we're going to be getting on the boat and we're going to be on it till the morning. So we're getting there at... I think it's 9.45 into Amsterdam and then we'll be driving down through hopefully through Belgium we want to kind of like get as many countries on the list as we can you know just kind of like 
yeah, get get more. You know, we 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 could just go straight through Germany, I think, but we we kind of like want to go through more places. Um, so we're going to go down through Belgium, I believe, into potentially Luxembourg. We're not sure. Um, then down into France, um, and we will be going to Colmar. So we're going to be staying in Colmar. Hopefully, we'll get some time to sort of see Colmar in the evening. Um, we're only we're only staying for the night, but we'll, that's what we're doing. And then after Colmar, we'll be heading down to, uh, to down through Switzerland into northern Italy, and then we'll be going down through Italy uh, to the port of Ancona, where we'll be getting on a boat to um, Igumitsa in Greece, um, and then we're we'll driving up through Greece into Bulgaria. And we've never done that route before, have we? So no. really looking forward to it. Emily, as you can see, is all ready to go. Not, <laughs> Not dressed yet. Yeah. Are you looking forward to going on a boat, Emily? I'm looking forward to going on a boat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Emily. It's yeah, Emily. that is Emily. Yeah, yeah. That's you. She doesn't quite got the whole Emily, you, your Emily, <laughs> me, you, I. Yeah. I mean, it's confusing, I know. But um, yeah, so quick look upstairs. We Basically, we've set everything up up here as well. We've got like, um, I'm leaving the loft open. Not sure if that's a good idea. Um, we've got, um, we've been packing baby milks. I mean, um, Chloe needs anti-reflux milk. So we've packed like a few of those. Um, this suitcase we're hoping not to um, get out during the actual trip. So this is all the stuff that we want to only open in Bulgaria. So we're trying to go with a new idea this year, which is separate bags of clothes for each place. And we've really struggled to go what day is what. So this is the clothes we're going to be wearing on Thursday, but we'll be taking into the hotel on Wednesday, <laughs> I think. I've got Chloe's clothes in my clothes, um, and Rachel has got... Emily's clothes and her clothes and the idea is that we're going to um you know pick that out at, like so at every hotel or every, every point where we need to sort of get clothes for the morning we're going to take one bag into the hotel so the idea is you're not carrying all your clothes all the time into the hotel um we've added a few extras in there things like that just in case we need extra clothes, um, so there's like kind of a you know, couple of changes. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to, we're hoping, aren't we, that this new idea will kind of work and we will not have to carry, because we always carry loads of stuff in, and now with Chloe, we've got to carry the pram in and stuff. So, car seat, <laughs> that's not a <her> pram. Um, <laughs> there's a the car seat, so that's what Chloe's going to be in all this trip. So that'd be good. Um, we think we've got to put her in the back of the car, haven't we? Because some of the countries we're driving through require you to be in the back of the car. Um, and it'll be easier, actually, for Rachel to deal with her. Um, so when she's in the front of the car, she's often trying to sort of get my attention. I don't think she realises that you're driving. So, yeah, we're getting there. We think we're nearly ready. Um, it's just a case of getting some breakfast now on it, Rach. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to kind of put everything in the car, hopefully, and start heading off. Right, so we've set off finally. We are close to uh, quarter to 10, so we wanted to set off at 8.30, but we're about an hour and 15 minutes late. Um, we've got to go and find a bank um, because we've got basically all the cash that the guy gave us for that car yesterday. Uh, that's a bit of a pain, but we've got to basically, um, we've got to get that cash into the bank. We can't basically carry it around with us everywhere. We don't really want to. Um, so we've got to go and do that now. So we're hoping that there's a short stay space outside the bank. I can run in, deposit the money, and we can get back on our way to Newcastle. We were going to go into the centre of Newcastle, weren't we? Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen now. We're more likely to... Um, there's an outlet more. Uh, Rachel wants to get like a costume for, for... There might be a pool on one of the ferries. So we're thinking of getting a costume. Everyone else has got one, but not Rachel. So we need to get one for her, but we think there's an outlet more at the port. So um, we're going to kind of do that, I think. So yeah, we're just going to try our best to kind of make up the time and we we'll have to cut some stuff out. But yeah, we're heading on now. going to try and get to the Halifax, um, if I can remember how to get there.
okay. I managed to get into the bank, uh, managed to use the deposit machine, which is a bit of a pain. It takes like 50 notes at a time. So I had to basically do that a few, quite a few times. Uh, as an ambulance. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically we um, had to, uh, yeah, had to deposit that money uh, from the car yesterday. But I've done that now and we're all set. Um, now we're heading basically out of Doncaster. I managed to just quickly park in a loading bay. Hopefully I won't get any kind of, um, you won't get any kind of problems with it or anything like that. Yeah, we should be all right, I think. Hopefully, we'll be on our way. And uh, we will be heading off to, um, to Newcastle. bit of a diversion there just because um, uh, the, uh, the there's big traffic so basically we've had to we've had to sort of um, go off the A1 and then like kind of around some local area and just as we were doing that the um, forward alert was it forward alert message came on so I'm just uh, I'm nervous with the, with Range Rovers but with this L322 not had any issues so I've never had that um, you know come on before um, and I have tested this on a longer run and stuff uh, but yeah the, there was a forward alert and a, a lot we looked it up and we most people sort of say it's a sensor of some kind and it affects your cruise control so one of the cool things about the L322 is it's not like a self-driving car or anything but when you put it in cruise control it, it's got lane assist I think and it will sort of slow it will slow you down um, so if you, if you basically got it on cruise control as opposed to the BMW which just maintained the speed that you set it at this will drive along and if there's a car in front it will start to slow down um, and kind of control your speed for you um, but, you know obviously I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't recommend relying on it completely but I, I was quite blown away by how good it was and so that's one of the like hidden features I didn't know that the L322 had. Um, this is a 2009 um, L322 uh, with the sort of um, uh, you know it's like kind of the the digital display um, so I don't know if uh, um, earlier models have it uh, but this one does and I tell you it's really good and um, yeah, now we're cracking along and we're getting on and hopefully the motorway's looking a bit clearer in front of us. Um, we had a nice little drive through the village, it was all right. It didn't take long. Went the wrong way at one point, but that was my fault. Uh, but yeah, like it, you know, it's, it's going well. It's just, if I, a lot of people saying it's just the sensor. You'll just have a bug over the sensor. So that, we may turn it off and then find when we turn it back on that that sensor clears, but yeah, let's just hope we don't have any more sort of issues like that <laughs> along the journey. Uh, because this is our first major journey in this L322, so let's see how we get on. But um, yeah, you know, we're, we're heading for Newcastle still, no major problems, it's just, a, it's just a thing. I'm hoping when I turn it off, 
um, we'll, we'll be it we'll turn it back on it'll be fine um, we sort of left with about um, so fuel wise we left with about and it was down to the first notch or whatever wasn't it on the fuel uh, we're now sort of halfway between one and a half um, so yeah so like we yeah so like four fifths of the tank I think uh, but yeah we're basically we're yeah maybe maybe a third of the tank left uh, two thirds sorry um, so we're heading to Newcastle same we got 278 miles um, of fuel and on the uh, sat nav is telling us we've got 97 miles so we should have plenty of fuel we will debate whether to fill up in Newcastle um, we'll look into what the fuel prices are looking like abroad at the moment in, in Amsterdam where we're heading to I believe that they are better in Europe than they are in the UK by a small amount so that that's what I found the other day when I was researching it um, but we'll do another check on the ferry um, or before the ferry actually so we should fill up but I mean we're not in any we're not in any worry I think about fuel so um, but our, our strategy usually on these trips is to kind of come off a motorway don't fill up on a motorway because that's going to basically cost more money um, so we usually try to use an app called Fuelo and we look for the cheapest fuel that we can find off the road if you've watched previous trip video you'll see that we did that um, and yeah we try to um, we try to find uh, fuel somewhere off the road don't we um, because you're you're gonna save money uh, one of the good things is that most of the countries in Europe except the UK and a few others um, none of which I think we're traveling through um, diesels cheaper than petrol so we should be getting better value uh, than we get here um, there's only a few countries I think in Europe uh, it's possible that Switzerland might be as well I can't remember but we probably just avoid filling up there fill up in France so we are we're hopefully going to have cheaper than petrol prices all the way through um, and I'm hoping that this car is more fuel efficient than the BMW was um, it's probably similar <laughs> we had a 4.8 liter x5 um, and this is a 3.6 liter TDV8 so this is a diesel so let's see let's see what it what it what it's like but um hopefully the fuel efficiency will be good um, we're not going to be driving too fast we'll just be kind of we're definitely going to be below 70 i think most of the time probably around about 60 50 to 60 hopefully um, depending on time and what have you but yeah we're heading on and um, we are hopefully going to be able to get everything we need for the trip in newcastle
to the outlet mall with the L322. So got us here, no problem in the end. Um, I don't know if that warning will come back on about the um, about the sort of forward sensor for the cruise control. Um, I'm just adapting the head beams before we get on the ferry. Um, basically, I think it's this white. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it's like a white um, lever. Not sure if it's a lever or not. It doesn't really seem to do anything much, but I've just kind of pushed it down and um, I think I've done something. I don't know, <laughs> but it's not a lot of information out there when I've searched on the forums. There's like one picture that I could find, um, but it seems to match and they don't really say that it's not that. It doesn't seem to flick. It just seems to click. And then if you press it back up, it seems to click again. I'm not really sure. So it's going to do the, uh, both sides. Um, but yeah, the car seemed all right, got us here. Um, camera didn't like blow off with the wind, so that was good. We had the camera up on the on the roof. Um, some roof was able to open to get to that and sort of set it properly, so that was good. Um, we're gonna put it back on again before we go into the ferry. Um, is Chloe, oh no, Chloe's not there. She's got it back in the boot. Ah, not in the boot, in the, in the back seat. Yeah, we haven't got Chloe in the boot. Uh, but yeah, we've got all our stuff for the trip. It's just loads of things like suitcases and bags for each day. Uh, but yeah, so far, car has done us proud. No, you know, apart from the error. And that, that's never, ever come up before, that whole forward... What was it? What was the sensor again? Forward alert. Forward, forward alert not available. Something like that. Yeah, I'm going to see if it comes back on when I turn it back on. But um, didn't seem to... Uh, didn't seem to happen when I turned it back on again but maybe it only comes on when you're on a motorway or something right so I'm gonna close this back up I'm gonna to go to the other side do the same on that side as well um, that was a, that's another I think the newer be, uh, the newer Range Rovers don't have this issue um, I think the L 405s can can do this automatically um, and that's the thing with our x5 it did do it automatically as well so this is a sort of shame that we're going back in the world a bit, we. Hang on, see if I can get my hand in there. So you don't really want to be doing this before you head off, really. You get full of, you know, muck doing it, so it's not the best thing in the world to be doing, but yeah. Same there, it's, a, it's like a sort of white lever, and I just pushed it down and you can kind of feel something happen and people did say down so I don't know we'll see <laughs> see if that turns out to be the right case ah here we go that's back on and that seems to be on the right way now I don't think that was on like that before uh, but this is a xenon there's like xenon headlights um, but yeah I've done that I think we're all good just look at over there at the other side um, the uh, sort of nice pipes been done on this as well so when I found this car I was quite happy to see that it had the the pipes done in there the rubber ones so they don't go brittle um, but yeah right close that back up I think that's closed seems closed better than our BMW one did as well but yeah it's looking good um, we've got like what's water down here pretty sure that's just the climate control stuff so We've had that with cars before where we panic, don't we? Thinking it's like leaking and um, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. And if it is, probably not major. Um, but yeah, Emily's all in there, got a tablet going. Right, I'm gonna set back up the cameras and then we're gonna go over to the check-in area. Um, and hopefully we'll get on this ferry. Um, we're quite early, but they did send us a message saying you had to be you know, well, you have to be here before 4.15 or something or you're not going. Um, but we, it said it was opening from one. It's about uh, 10 past two now. So we're, we're early enough. Uh, we got something to eat in the outlet mall, uh, which is looking a bit sorry for itself, unfortunately. Um, I came here years ago and it would look brand new, but it's, uh, I think it's seen better days. But anyway, right, I better get on. Um, get the car set up and then we can get on the ferry.
So we're on the boat. We've uh, managed to get on, get on the boat and get in, into the cabin. Um, there's Chloe. Chloe's a... Oh no, she is awake now. Yeah, she just woke. The first boat ride, uh, Chloe. And Emily's first boat ride that she can probably remember at the moment. Well, she kind of remembers what she does and then forgets it, doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, basically, we're on the River Tyne, I think. So you can see out to like kind of further up the river. And um, I think there's some sort of dock over there as well. Uh, but yeah, basically we're waiting for the ship to start going now. Um, don't know how long it's going to be because ship's time is like an hour ahead of the UK. So we don't really know whether that means that we leave at 5 Central European time whether we leave at 5 UK time, so we're going to find out. Um, it may be 6 o'clock UK time, but I don't, I don't know. Will it be, do you think? No, no, it might be, no, it'll be 4 o'clock UK time, I think. But it's 4 o'clock now, I think, UK time, and we still haven't left, so it's only 10 past, it's about 10 past 4 now. But ship time is 10 past 5, so it's a bit confusing. Uh, but yeah, got a nice view out over, I guess this is like the time here. Um, I don't exactly know exactly where that is, but there's the ship behind me. Um, see up to the funnel. Up there's the sky bar, which I think I'll be uh, going and taking a look at soon. Um, yeah, and here's the port round here. I'll just take it round to the other side, and you can see, basically, it's a Danish ship by the looks of it. It's got a Danish flag. So, I guess DFPS is a Scandinavian company, probably Denmark made. Um, but yeah, basically, yeah, there's the port itself, there's the customs area that we came through earlier, um, there's loads of coaches and stuff down there, that's where we drove onto the boat, so we drove down, we drove down that way in, onto the boat, um, I can't remember which one, but I think we were on the one bit, bit with the road there. Um, yeah, so far, good experience on the boat. Um, I think this is for foot passengers, the uh, ferry terminal over there. But yeah, basically we're just waiting to settle. So yeah, we're just, just, just basically hanging around. But yeah, we came in through those check-in desks up that way, uh, through the customs area, which is down over there where that car's parked in the distance. Don't know if you'll pick it up. Uh, but yeah, so this is the boat. It's quite a big boat. And um, basically we're on here now till about 10 a.m. tomorrow, 9.45. Uh, last time that we came on this, Dutch fishermen blocked the ports. <laughs> so we couldn't get in until about two or three hours later than what we were supposed to get there. But I think that was all over fuel prices. And I believe now that the fuel prices have come down quite a bit. Well, I'm hoping they have. Um, so I don't think we're going to have that issue this time. I think there won't be any blocking of the port, which means we've got to be sort of ready to get off the boat at the right time. So we kind of got delayed by two, three hours. I think it was like, was it like two hours we were delayed, Rach, last yeah. time? Yeah, it was about two hours. And we were able to kind of relax in the cabin a bit before we were able to go down. And uh, we did struggle to get off. It isn't easy with two kids trying to get <laughs> to get on the uh, boat. <laughs> But um, we've, we managed it, and uh, I think I've been, I've been back to the car about three times now to get stuff that I forgot. Uh, but yeah, quite a nice little view. I mean, it's a, re it's a really nice little port, and it's not like, it's not as busy as Dover, is it, Rage? No. Like, it's nowhere near as busy as crossing with Dover, and you get a nice relaxation on the boat. You can go and have a beer. You can, you know, sleep on the boat on, and get up in the morning, and go and get some breakfast, and... It's, it's a nicer experience than just doing a cross-channel ferry, and we kind of paid what? Like, for this, I think it was about £400. I don't know if it ended up being about five. i I'm not sure. It was... I think it was £400. Yeah, I think it was around about 400 and that was with food. So, basically, yeah, on a... on a... on a cross-channel ferry, maybe you pay about... I don't know... 100 odd, 120, something like that, maybe a bit more, maybe 180. So to be honest with you, it's double the price, but you're gonna get like somewhere to sleep, you're gonna get the food. Um, you do have to book the restaurant, but I, the price I'm saying included that. Um, but yeah, we, you know, 
we, we were really looking forward to doing this again um, and uh, yeah traveling back this way so yeah we're looking forward to basically tonight aren't we going in the restaurant and stuff Emily's enjoying her boat experience <laughs> Emily do you like it on a boat I like it on a boat yeah you like it on a boat I don't think she's just repeating what I'm saying I think she does like it on the boat <laughs> Chloe do you like a boat do you like the boat do you like being on the boat no not bothered yeah <laughs> she's out look she's looking out at the view probably not much of a view from her point of view mostly the bin uh, <laughs> no it's looking all right and uh, yeah what's really cool about this boat is when we set off we'll go down the Tyne and it takes a little while to go out and it's quite cool you go past nice buildings and like nice areas out on the Tyne and then you um, you basically go out and it kind of skirts down the UK coast all the way down the coast so if you turn off your roaming you won't pick up the satellite from the boat but you might you know you if you've got UK or whatever network you know probably if you've got maybe if you're like international you might have to select the network um, but I, I think you know I think you still get a mobile signal down the UK coast until you sort of go to bed and then it kind of heads out into the North Sea and then you will, you know, obviously you won't get that signal, but you'll be asleep, so it won't matter. Well, some people will be in the club, but we won't. <laughs> we definitely won't be in the club. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's quite a cool experience. I, re I really enjoyed it last time as well. Looking forward to coming back again. So yeah, let's uh, go and see the Sky Bar, I think. restaurant and we've got our food well Rachel's still waiting for our food because uh, <laughs> kids basically uh, eating that's all right so Chloe's got her food I've got a beer and Emily's got a pizza and some chips and a burger and Emily don't wipe that in the table <laughs> she's wiping the pizza in the table yeah so she's got she's got a pizza don't rub it in the table. And anyway, yeah, I've got some spicy chips, some kibbling, kibbling I think it's called, which is like little pieces of cod in batter. I think it's cod or some kind of fish, isn't it? Um, I've got uh, pepperoni. I've got a burger as well, which is basically like proper beef burger, Angus burgers, I think they were called. Um, I've got pork neck and some beef in there. I've got little roasted potatoes, I mean, pretty good actually, the, 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 and oh, and some smoked salmon, so I'm really happy with that. It's, it is a really good buffet, isn't it, for the, for the money that you pay, and um, the queue's looking a bit long, not too bad, not as long as before you sort of queue in to get a plate, really. There are other plates over there, I think you can't get some of the food if you don't wait in that queue, but you can kind of skip it if you just want the chips. Um, and a kibbling. If you just want kibbling, you're laughing because you can skip it. But yeah, it's all looking good. Lolly is still present and not overboard. Chloe is having milk. Rachel is being patient. <laughs> Emily is tucking in already, eating the burger. That's the Angus burger that she's got. And yeah, I'm basically putting off eating this just to show you. <laughs> but I will be cracking for it soon. But yeah, it's looking good on board, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. 
and um, if I can flip the camera and you can see behind basically you've got like lots of seating areas um, the drinks are paid for so my Heineken like basically costs money so you've got to basically pay for Heineken and any kind of drink any kind of drinks isn't it so drinks aren't included but all the food is included with the with the buffet price isn't it um, yeah staff are really good come around and get your drinks uh, when you come in and uh, yeah we're really enjoying it so we're basically gonna sit down and just basically get our money's worth out of this buffet really I think that's what we're gonna do isn't it yep we thought we'd show you our cabin so you know what to expect if you get on this boat um, we've got two bunks at the top here um, Rachel's got Chloe down there we're basically getting ready for bed really aren't we yeah. so you've got we've got a four berth cabin and we always stay like the bottom of the boat don't we whenever we travel on the boat because we're like it's a lower center of gravity we think and so you're gonna have less sort of chance of seasickness yeah, yeah, yeah so we've got like you've got like a good space for charging we've got like we've charged quite a few devices off that we're even tempted to run a kettle tomorrow and there's no, nothing saying that you shouldn't so we're not sure um yeah it's quite good basically and um it's quite spacious uh this is the toilet area uh, i put that shower curtain in there hopefully the light will come on but yeah so you get like a sort of you know wash basin again it doesn't say that you can't drink the water so i don't think it'd be that appetizing but um doesn't say you can't drink it so it doesn't say it's not safe um, you get like a shower it's like a full-on shower and toilet um, and the toilet's pretty good um, yeah it's pretty good basically this is the cabin um, you know it's reasonable size we're just we're just getting ourselves ready for bed copying files off all the cameras and everything charging everything back up for the morning and Emily's uh, Emily's quietening down for the night as you can tell <laughs> and yeah so we're getting there aren't we yeah. yeah it's not bad it's a it's a decent cabin um, it's a decent size um, the beds can actually be so you could use it as a two berth couldn't you yeah. so I think basically if you buy a two berth you'll just end up with the same cabin with four beds <laughs> so I don't know if we well, I don't know if they would have let us done that but we could have probably bought a two berth and then these beds would have just been up here and you just pull them down but they were up when we came in weren't they yeah. um so i'm going to be sleeping probably up here tonight in the top bunk i think emily is down there with the swiss cow <laughs> she's got there that we brought back from switzerland and um yeah we've, we've found it reasonable reasonable and easy to kind of do but yeah we're sort of down on deck two which is like the bottom deck so i don't know what deck one is maybe there's a deck below that but um we're on we're on deck two so we're like basically the lowest you can go in the lift but i think that's not a bad thing center of gravity you're not moving around too much in the night it's sort of rocking side to side but it's not terrible yeah they've got vending machines for for drinks as well so i picked up some waters from there two euros a bottle um i think they had iced tea for um three euros and pepsi was two euros i think so machines just down by the lifts near where our um cabin is so very easy to get to very easy to uh to um to get water so that's what we did we've got a few of them uh we've made up some bottles haven't we from the um water that we had from earlier we've got like flasks that keep water hot uh, we brought uh, Chloe's anti-reflux milk with us because she uh, she needs anti-reflux milk and yeah we've had no issues really so far we had a really good evening in the on the boat it's been really good um, it's a little bit like windy out now wasn't it we went out yeah. on the deck it was a little bit windy out there but yeah pretty good um, you get shower so you can basically have a shower um, you can you know you get nice comfy beds We're looking forward to having a rest didn't we yeah. and then you have to be up early I think we've set the alarm for five 
So we're going to try and get up at five. And breakfast starts at seven. So we've got to get everybody ready. And then we'll go up for seven. Then come back down. Hopefully we'll just pack everything up. And then it'll be quite quickly into Amsterdam in the morning. And we can get everything back in the car and crack on with the rest of the journey. Um, we're heading on towards Colmar. So the next stop will be the Ibis budget in Colmar, hopefully. Um, yeah, so now we're just going to have a night of charging phones and charging power packs and devices and what have you. And uh, But we've got a good charger, so and, and the power supply seems really good in here. So, yeah, pretty good. I um, can't remember what we paid for this. Maybe it was like 160 quid or something for the cabin. I can't remember. I'll probably put the prices up on the uh, up on the video so you can see like what what it costs, um, like a breakdown of what it cost for us. Um, I think the total in all was around about four hundred to five hundred. I can't remember. I want to say four hundred, <laughs> but maybe my brain has told me that's what it is, and it's not. Maybe it's five hundred, but no, I think I, th I don't know. I'll I'll put that up. But yeah, we're getting ready, and uh, Chloe's having. It's just the last milk of the night, hopefully. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it might be a milk head. overnight. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So hopefully we're all gonna have a nice sleep, and we'll be refreshed in the morning and have a lovely breakfast. <laughs>